There was the Mavic Pro, then there was the Spark, then came the Air, which looked much more like a big spark. Then came the Mavic 2 Pro, which looked like a Mavic Pro, obvs, and then the Mavic Mini, which looked like a Mavic 2 Pro that looked like a Mavic Pro. Now we have this. And it looks more like it's bigger bro than the original Air. It's like a smaller version of the Mavic Pro. And on first glance, it doesn't actually look much different in size to the Pro. And the original Air looks smaller than this, but actually it's not much bigger than the OG Air. And it is noticeably smaller than the Pro. It feels heavier than its predecessor, but the plastic seems to be sturdier. Similar not just in looks to the Pro, but also the rigidness of the plastic. Great news if um, you want to drop it but it feels solid like the Pro, not like the Mini, which is proper lightweight. That does mean it comes in a bit beefier than the original Air, but it does pack some features that will give all of those a run for its money. But before that, it comes with this. First of all, this is new. It looks similar to the fancy smart controller without the smartness. It doesn't have a screen here. Similar shape though, you just have to add the smart bit yourself. One thing is that it will take up more space in your bag because it's almost twice the size now, but I really hated using those foldy outy phone holder things before. This is a pretty neat solution. Check this out. Yes, it's a phone holder that works a bit like the handle on your suitcase, which doesn't make it sound cool, but it is. The spring is not too strong, so it doesn't feel like some finger strengthening, multitasking challenge exercise when you pull it out and try to slip your phone in. And when it comes to taking your phone back out and then putting this back, it doesn't spring all the way back down, so you don't risk your fingers being made into a sandwich. I don't have any details on battery life. Apparently it lasts a long time, which I should hope so, as they must have fit a bigger cap battery and a bigger controller like that. Right, that's the controlly thing done. What about the flyy thing? Yeah, so as far as controllers go, that's really intriguing. But what's even more intriguing is how I'm going to show you how this thing works with the lockdown in place. I mean, I'm not going to go out just to fly this thing about because it's not really considered an exercise. And flying a drone from a balcony, not cool. I'm going to fly drones safely from now on. We're just going to have to use our creative imaginations together, right? We're all creatives anyway. That's what we like calling ourselves. So let's imagine. Um, all oh, the people. Oh wow, this thing flies like a dream. Come on, at least put a phone on and the control stick. Oh yeah. Oh wow, yes, it flies like a dream. So yeah, anyway, it shoots 4K 60 FPS, which is quite something. There's only one other consumer drone that currently does that. I think that's the Phantom 4 Pro V2. Yes, well done, Kai. Give yourself a gold star. Pain in the ass to remember that name. Quite an impressive thing to gloat about, 4K 60p. Especially as you can rub that in the faces of Mavic 2 Pro owners and current Air owners that max out at 4K 30. Wow, 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 look at, wow, just wow. But even more wow is that if you're happy to drop it down to 1080, you can take some even slower motion for some smooth balls jumping up and down in the landscape's action or volcanic eruptions, kind of, in 120 or 240 FPS. Of course, the Mavic 2 Pro still has a big advantage and that's the one inch sensor, but the sensor within the Mavic Air 2 is slightly bigger than that of the original Air. But there are some things that the Air 2 does better than all the others, such as the flight time of 34 minutes. Lift off, here we go. Okay, time to bring it in now. Now it can take HDR photos and video thanks to a quad Bayer filter or something or another. It's gotten more potential as a flying still shooter too. Just look at the specs handily written on lens so I don't need to remember. So this can take a 48 megapixel photo. That's, that's lots of megapixels. That's like one more megapixel than 47. I'm gonna take a picture of a, some bricks. Usually I wouldn't recommend it because that's not very safe. You have to be far away from buildings and stuff. But this time I will. 
By the way, these filters will come in handy. Rotate to slip them on and off. The images look good. Center images look sharp and detailed, a bit soft on the edges. It's quite a big jump up from even the 20 megapixel Mavic 2 Pro, but welcome for anyone who wants to take aerial landscapes. But I guess that resolution is also what allows it to do 8K time lapses. Oh, that's hype. That's really hyper. Zoom, that's really zippy. Unsurprisingly, like the other consumer DJI drones, it will have the fancy smart tracking features. Wow, I almost forgot what the outside looks like. Amazing. But yes, also like each new DJI drone, they keep improving on that tracking and the safety features. What else we've got? We have got focus track, so basically more advanced tracking. Oh, look at that, it's, it's following me. It's like a magnet. It's like a fly to a, a freshly laid piece of turd. And I'm the turd. So yeah, it can track like a moving subject like me riding a bicycle, which I am doing right now. Yeah, it's tough work riding a bike while flying a drone. Something that I wouldn't usually recommend. Imagination, remember? But yeah, it has obstacle sensing on the front, bottom and back, like the air, but not sideways like the Mavic 2. But it has APAS 3.0 versus 2.0 of the Mavic 2 for better tracking of subjects. And the obstacle avoidance has been improved. Check that. Wow. Q. But to borrow Clooney's most famous line, what else? Core blimey, 10 kilometers, that's over there. I can see it, well I can't see it because it's really far away. But luckily I can see it because I've got OcuSync 2.0. 1080p transmission of course. The Mavic Air 2 is like a lot of DJI drone releases, a mix of things that will make flying easier, safer, etc. with bits that will enhance the shooting process. The 4K 60, the 8K hyperlapse, the 48 megapixel stills, all add extra oomph to the aerial arsenal, giving quite a bit more for less weight and less money. Wow.